Welcome. We've made a few changes uh, to our setup here and also to the way competition is being run. So just in general, uh, from now on until we change it again, <laughs> we're going to have just one image per person. That gives the judges the opportunity to uh, critique the images. So there will be a written critique for all of the images. There will be a verbal critique for all of the images, which is different. Uh, and the judges are encouraged to talk to each other. They've talked to each other once before. We have new judging instructions. A couple of nights ago, they met and went through all of their images and made sure they understood why someone's score was higher or lower than theirs. And that will lead to a much more consistent judging. It doesn't do anything for the scores that show up on the images. I'm notorious for scoring low. Patrick is no notorious for scoring high. He likes everybody. <laughs> so I think that kind of takes care of judging. Uh, okay. I've got to get a, I've got to get a uh, lavalier. Yeah. But uh, Tonight is oldies, images two years old or older. Uh, next competition will be an open competition. We're still going a little slow on defining competition themes, but that's because we're trying to pair themes with presentations. So things you might expect to see is our next presenter is uh, a por Lisa Haltz, a uh, portrait photographer and wedding photographer. So can I expect to see people in pet portraits as a competition theme? Uh, we haven't decided how far out that's going to be relative to the presentation. We've done a, previously a month and a half. We might want to add another month to that. Uh, it's all open. We, leadership has not met and pinned this down. Uh, there will probably be a macro uh, hands-on shoot here. Uh, I'll bring four stages set up to shoot macro on. So uh, that will be probably another macro f competition following that. Uh, third Thursday we have uh, portrait photography, then we have the, February will be the hands-on workshop. Uh, we have two art shows coming up. Verlin, is this enough for right now? We have the, the Pflugerville Library on the 16th. Do you, you want to take a mic and sure. help us with this? All right, so we have the Pflugerville Library Show on February 16th. Obviously, dates on calendar are closer than they appear. So if you have prints, you can uh, show, I believe, up to five prints uh, and a size up to 16 by 20. Um, I can't hear him, so... So that's the show. Get your prints ready. The instructions will be online uh, soon. We've got to have a leadership meeting sometime next week and pin down this, instructions for this, uh, show instructions, and also uh, the uh, judges' instructions, which have been through a couple of rounds of review, and I think they're ready to publish. And then uh, for those of you who haven't done shows before, uh, Carol has talked about getting a, a kind of standard frame that we can link on Amazon on the website. So if you just don't know where to start, this is where you can start. Use this frame. It'll have the right dimensions and the right size and print to fit that. Thank you. Uh, we have a fifth Thursday pretty soon coming up. Uh, Again, we'll be downtown Pflugerville. The Prost Ale House is brand new. 
they're in a soft opening right now. So this is the fifth Thursday. Come visit the new business and enjoy their, their brew. Ty, it's your show. <clears throat> All right. So um, it's going to, I'm trying this as a new way because I'm using a Mac, so I had to build this presentation, but hopefully that'll make it all go smoothly. But it's going to follow the same format. Everything will look the same as we normally do. So first we'll go through the basic images fairly quickly, and then we'll go through it a second time with the judge's critiques. Am I, should I, am I supposed to say the, the names of all of them here? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, Rosie Etz in Flight. Giraffe in a Sandstorm. Still Life in Marfa. 80s in Red. Okay, so we'll go through them again. And for each one, the judges will uh, give critiques and have a little discussion about it. Yeah, so uh, dock reflection symmetry. Uh, so uh, it's a very interesting composition of the reflection of the pier on the water. Uh, when we got together and chit-chatted about this, uh, one of the things that we found, uh, we, we all had a, a liking for the image, but to be, it's a very symmetric image, except for the point of the apex of the pier in the water is off center. So the maker could either possibly move it to the right and make it asymmetric, or move it to the center and make it completely symmetric. And the other thing that we were uh, looking at was that it's a very, it could be a very graphic scene, uh, photograph, and so it could have had the, uh, the contrast boosted a little bit in this. Um, the, the shoreline in the, in the back, um, is, it's okay, uh, but to make it more graphic and much more impact, yeah, impactful, uh, to bring up the contrast on this a little bit. So, uh, anyone else? Nope, okay, we're on to the next one. Okay, uh, this one is mine. Um, the colours of, of these rosettes is uh, really eye-catching, is really pleasing, and clearly they, they make a, a good subject. Um, the colours have been captured well, and they stand up very nicely, particularly against the darker background of the hedge. Um, I do wonder where I should be looking, though. Um, I think we all felt there were two or three different images in here. Um, the may come through more strongly if this were cropped differently. Um, the, the birds spread right across the, the width of the image, gives us a lot of empty sky. Um, I'd, I'd certainly suggest maybe trying a tighter crop here, focusing on maybe the group in the bottom right, um, taking out the head of the bird that's just starting to fly into frame or maybe the two birds above it, over the top of the hedge. I, I think trying something like that, you, you could well get a, a far stronger um, composition. Um, the author's picked a shutter speed of 1 1600. Um, this little bit of softness in the birds might be worth trying this a little faster. Um, I think that would help to just sharpen up the whole image. Um, anyone want to add anything? I had something I wanted to add about this. Um, I, I sometimes give references to other photographers um, or contemporary photographers that are working in the field. And there's a photographer named Gray Mallon who has some similar work. And I, I, I think I mentioned it in, the, um, in my critique, but um, for the photographer, I would recommend that you check out the work of uh, Gray Mallon to see um, how he, he did um, a lovely image of some pink birds in flight um, to get an idea of you know, some contemporary work that is, that is similar to this. Next. Um, okay, this one was mine. Um, um, can you all hear me? 
Oh, good. Okay. So um, I thought this image had beautiful light. The quality of the light is very strong. Um, when we talk about light, photography is very much about light. And the thing about light is it's also not just quantity, but it's also the quality and the color of the light and the modification of the light. And in a way, because the sandstorm, that really adds to the quality of the light. It adds, a, I thought it had a beautiful quality of the light, um, and that's really captured wonderfully here. I thought this was an elegant, um, it sort of bathes the image in that beautiful light. Um, I thought the light on the horizon, sort of the shaft of light, was, was working for me. Again, it's really a wonderful highlight, and it adds some depth to the image. Um, the choice of going vertical and going in a silhouette almost is a really good choice by the photographer. A lot of times what makes a good photograph is are the choices we make, and it's not always obvious when you look at the resulting image, right? The photographer could have gone horizontal. Instead, they chose vertical. It, it fits with the shape of the animal. Um, I was just reading something recently where they were talking about the, with wildlife, it's very much about the motion of the animal, the gesture, and the shape they're making. And a lot of times, good wildlife photographers will wait to capture the animal just in the right shape, you know, where the legs have separation or, or what. And this image kind of fits that. The, it's a good pose on the giraffe. Um, it's a very interesting shape, and giraffes are all about shape. Um, and I thought it's interesting that his or her head is lined up with the, with the mountain on top. Um, again, I thought it was a good choice of going vertical. The one thing I would suggest is there's a little extra space around the image, so cropping either from the bottom or from the top or potentially both um, to give it more impact because um, there is a little bit more negative space than I would like in, in the image. I guess if it were my image, I would maybe crop in a bit tighter either from the top or bottom, um, and that's what I had to say. Okay. Um, this one's mine to talk about. Uh, I really like this. Just It's just a very simple image. Um, everything works. The composition works in this very nicely, I believe. The fact that there's this old stucco, the white, uh, on one side and a newer gray unpainted stucco on the, uh, on the right uh, versus the, the old on the left. Uh, it, it just adds to the contrast and, and the overall idea that Marfa is old and aging. Um, I, I've heard the term before, um, and it's, uh, let's see, I have it in here, do, 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 do. Uh, arrested decay. Uh, it's something that the U.S. Park Service uses in some of their uh, old ghost towns and things, where they'll actually that, that's what they just call it. So the, the image itself is very, very nice in that respect. Um, I would have liked to have seen uh, a touch more contrast to bring out some more texture in the stucco. I think that would have been very, very helpful. It would have brought the door, uh, the, the striations from the, um, the grain and the wood would have come out even more. Uh, I think it's a strong image and it, it could go a lot further. Uh, with a little bit extra help and, uh, yeah, and care. Yeah. Okay, this one's, uh, this one's mine. Um, this is a very nicely put together and, and nicely lit image um, that's uh, been done here, particularly for something in the basic category. Um, it, it stands out in that respect, absolutely. Um, the model is nicely posed and is in a, an interesting position. Um, there's a nice diagonal going through her body from her head down through um, her legs. Um, I like the lantern on the shelf at the bottom right. I think that adds a bit of balance to the image. Um, although the, uh, the hot spot just to the right of that does, does keep drawing my eye a bit. Um, there's also... Uh, a table just underneath her head, which uh, again draws the eye and really is, is a distraction more than anything. Um, maybe a, a bit less light on the armchair that's in, not in front of her, but in front of us um, underneath that table. But a nice, a nicely taken image, nice colours, um, very pleasing to look at. Great effort. Okay. Same. 
more comments? Okay. <clears throat> so now we'll go to the judges' uh, picks, and we only have two because we don't have that many pictures. So we're going to just have silver and gold today. So second place is uh, the Still Life in Marfa by Mark. And uh, first place, 80s in red by Verlin. <laughs> Does anyone? Probably. Do you want to say anything about any of the images? An 80s album cover book. All right, so uh, this was actually taken during Precision Camera University at the Kalahari Resort. Um, but this was my thing. I went way off script for this. Uh, I saw this place. There's a kind of club that's like a speakeasy that they that these two bookcases are actually a, a secret door to get in. And uh, and I was like, okay, well, this is all great. And then I had her already wearing the red boots, so we got some red light and went to town. And the idea was uh, an 80s hair metal album cover. Is Mark here? Is, is Mark here? Would you, would you like to say anything about your picture? Yeah, so I uh, kind of spent the day at Marfa and was very interested in all the arrested decay around the place, and so I ended up trying to uh, find a set of kind of still structures, uh, and um, I may turn that into more of a, a, a series at some point, but I've, I've got about a half a dozen, and, and it's kind of, I find it kind of interesting, the textures and everything. Okay, and now we will go through the... Viewers Choice Awards. Um, the bronze position went to Leslie with the giraffe in the sandstorm. Uh, <clears throat> 80s in red for silver. And still life in Martha for gold. So now the intermediate, we have 12 images, and we'll just quickly go through them. Unique Azure Blue Lake, uh, Moraine Pre-Sunrise, Alberta, Canada. Brighten My Day. Hmm. Not sure. Seem to be totally frozen. No, there. Okay, uh, mystified. Force winds again. Hurricane Allen spawned tornado damage at Austin Robert Mueller Airport. That's a while ago. Oh, so beautiful. Busy as can be. Star Trails Over the Chisos, Waller Creek Show, Downtown Austin 2015, Polly Nathan, and Passion. Okay, we'll go through those again, but with critiques. Okay, so we're critiquing now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one was mine. Um, so hang on, let me get my notes. Um, I wanted to say one thing, not in particular about this image, but in general, we had a lot of landscapes this month, and I wanted to mention something about that. Sometimes I make comments that are generally for the whole group, um, and I wanted to mention this because I think it is very important. When you shoot landscapes, it is it's especially critical, especially now in today's climate, Landscape images have to be impeccable. I tend to judge them especially more harsh because the
the landscape especially, um, when you go out, when you backpack out or canoe out, whatever, it's very important that you know, you're choosing the whole subject, right? If you shoot a bird and the bir bird is maybe not as pretty or, you know, or the, you shoot like a, a pug or something and it's not a good looking dog, it's, that's the subject, right? But when you do a landscape, you choose everything about that image. So it's really critical and there's, it's, very, it's very unforgiving as a medium. So um, I tend to judge landscapes very harshly. Um, and I think that's critical because it is uh, very important. So now getting into this image in particular, um, I thought this was a really good classical landscape image. Um, it's, it's very, there's a lot of blue, it's very, it's very cool toned. There's almost nothing warm in this image. It's all sort of blue, green, and purple, which I thought was really interesting. Of course, the environment is a beautiful, lovely place with that blue, blue water. Um, again, I said, when, when you do landscapes, you have to go out and find something that's really stunning and worthy of bringing back. And I think the photographer has done that. This landscape is worthy of the photographer's eye. And I think that's very critical when, when you're doing a landscape. In a landscape image, also, if the sky is not working for you, it's working against you. And in this case, I think the sky is working. I think there's enough clouds and enough definition. It's not flat. And I think that's working as well. Um, if this were my image, the one thing I would change would be sort of the left edge. I don't think the left edge is... is pulling its weight compared to the rest of the real estate in the image. So I almost wish uh, there's a line that goes up sort of towards the left corner. I wish that were in the corner of the image, going right into the corner. Um, if this were my image, I might sort of mat it out if I were printing and framing it. Um, but overall, I thought this was an interesting, cool tone. Um, I think it's a good treatment of the subject. There's no warm tones in the image, so it gives that cool, crisp feeling. And again, I thought this was a very good for a landscape um, for the intermediate category. Oops, I'm gonna go back if you would, sir. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this image uh, as well. It's very, very nice. Uh, it does give you that cool sense of coolness in the air. Um, the one thing that I probably would have liked to have seen, uh, and on this screen it really shows it, uh, is that it, it appears to be uh, overexposed. Uh, you've got the trees well exposed and the left-hand side, that canyon wall, looks really nice, but the rest of it is just a touch overexposed. Um, and I think that, that could have brought in a little more impact. Oh, bright in my day. Ah, okay. So, um, really like this image. It is simple, yet colorful, complex, well done. Um, I found very little issue with this image. I, I, I like the fact that the center of focus, if you will, is, is easily seen. It's this pink flower just slightly off center to the left. Um, the colors in each one of the petals is, is wonderful. There's not too much, uh, e even the white uh, flower down in the lower right, uh, left hand corner is, it's there, but it doesn't seem to be that distracting. It actually adds uh, some uh, negative weight to the whole thing by, by being there. Uh, and so it's, it's just a really, really nice image. I applaud the maker on that one. This one's a, a really um, eye-catching image. Um, it was taken with an iPhone, and given it was an iPhone 5, and we're now on 16, um, I think um, even more kudos for um, capture. Yeah. Okay, I'll swallow the microphone. How's that? Okay, yeah. Um, so nice image taken with a, an iPhone 5 um, as opposed to today's iPhones, which given the restrictions, I think um, just adds a little more kudos to this being well done. There's a very good focus um, on the leading leaf um, and um, on the majority of, of, of the leaves in general. Uh, I think the black and white 
is uh, a very nice choice uh, for this subject. I think it's a little hot on, on a few of the highlights here. Um, and it has a very strange silvery effect to it. Um, um, I would guess it's gone through Silver FX Pro and someone's applied a lot of wet rocks to it or something like that. Um, it's what it looks like t t to my eye anyway. But I think that also adds uh, a little bit of mystery to it. Maybe that's why it's called Mystified. Um, there's a little bit of noise in it, but I don't think it's um, uh, particularly offensive. Um, end effects are really nice. I thought uh, quite thought provoking. Well done. Sorry, I forgot to print my notes, so I don't have which images I'm supposed to do. So this one is me. Um, so for this one, I really like the colors, and I recognize that race photography is very difficult to do. Um, it's very hard to get um, in the right spot at the right time. So kudos for getting uh, the two cars in the image. Um, and the, the colors in it are beautiful and very interesting, and I realize a lot of that is out of the control of the photographer, but it, it is a very interesting image for that, um, for that reason. Um, I think the, the crop on it is, is good. Um, I like the colors and the energy of it. Um, the one thing I wish um, the perspective were a little bit different. I wish it was either going up into the corner or completely flat. Um, it's just a little bit off, and I recognize that it's also very difficult to do that. Sometimes when you're in the stand shooting, you don't always have that control. Um, I, we mentioned in our judging as well that in a way, we wish you could tell the cars were moving a little bit. It's very, it's very stopped, um, and it, the, the energy is coming from the colors in the image rather than the the motion of the actual cars. But I, I, you know, I, I said, um, I think we were talking in, in last night or when we were discussing it. I said it's almost like Olympic judging because. I feel like you, you're taking on a hard subject by doing racing, so uh, kudos to the photographer for getting the cars in, getting a, a nicely um, exposed image, great color, great crop. Um, a lot, there's a lot that's working for me. Um, just wish uh, it were a little bit different perspective. Okay. Um. As I, I stated in my actual written notes, that uh, for a non-Austinite, um, this actually is um, a reminder that the rogue hurricane, a, a rogue hurricane will come up this way and beat the bejeepers out of the area. So um, I, given that, I think it's a really wonderful uh, documentary uh, type of image. Uh, it, definitely tells the story of, of the aftermath of this hurricane coming through. Uh, so I, I would have liked to have seen, if I was here at the time, I probably would have liked to have seen that in the newspaper kind of thing. Uh, it's very powerful in that sense. Um, so it's, yeah, that's, that's about where I'm gonna go with that one. So, yeah. Okay, oh so beautiful, that's uh, my one. Um, this is an interesting scene that's clearly caught the um, the early or, or late sun on the top of the mountains um, really nicely there, uh, really nice colours. There's an interesting sky and there's some really good details in the foreground. I particularly like the uh, the patina um, and the moss on, on the rocks in the foreground. I think they're really interesting. Um, the... What I struggle with a bit is where my eyes are going in it. I, li I like the hills at the top. I like the rocks in the front. I like the valley and on the right-hand quarter and the tr little trees that lead up. But m I find my eyes flicking around the image a bit, and I wonder whether um, a bit of cr additional cropping or maybe some dodging and burning to try and emphasize where the photographer's eyes should flow um, would add just a, a little bit more um, to the image. But um, nice picture. Okay, uh, this one was mine. Um, so for me, there's a lot of things I loved about this image. Uh, the B is... I think is really an excellent position and a great, I almost want to see a small, sc 
To me, this is two images in one. Um, I almost want to see a small square image of that bee and that flower because I think the position of the bee is very lovely and the position of the bee in relation to the flower and the scale of the bee to the flower is wonderful. Um, I think that's very strong. Um, then there's the sort of um, out of focus, soft focus um, on the left edge. And uh, to me, this was very reminiscent of a photographer, contemporary photographer out of Australia named Renee Campbell. And I, I think I left in the critique that I would recommend that the photographer check out her work because she does very beautiful uh, flower abstracts. And to me, I'd almost want to see an entire image done as the abstract and then an entire image of the bee itself. And so I almost felt like this was trying to be two images in one. And I think they're both good images, but somehow when you put them together, it's almost like it's competing for my eye. So I, I wish it, it would, in a way, it could be two separate images. But overall, there's a lot of good things about this image. The colors, uh, the exposure, the position of the bee, it's carefully seen. And I like the image. I just wish it had that separation, if, if that could be possible. OK. Um, something that I've really never done before, so it's not my genre of photography. But uh, the Star Trail, uh, it's the, the symmetry of this is really quite nice. Um, kudos to the photographer for finding the North Star and, and getting dead center on it. I'm assuming that's what, that, what we're looking at. Um, the colors in here are, are interesting. I guess I've never noticed. I've always seen star trails in black and white. Um, so to see one in color is very, very interesting. Nice colors throughout the entire thing. Um, and again, not my genre. So I, was, uh, I see where the 30 seconds of exposure starts and stops with just about every one of the stars, but it was an ultra clear night, and so you've got just so many of them. It's just amazing. Uh, the only thing that I would would have liked to have seen, uh, and I know that this is, this is an image from yesteryear, uh, is the Chizos Mountains uh, just it pulled out just a little bit so we saw a touch of detail, not much, but the the silhouette that's down there right now um, kind of adds to the whole feel of this image. Very well done. We had a bit of a discussion about this one last night as to whether we were looking at um, irradiated bagels or irradiated donuts or inner tubes or, or quite what. Um, but. Uh, an interesting installation and uh, a very uh, interesting image of these um, floating rings. Um, the neon green is very eye-catching and the exposure's being controlled so there's no overwhelming highlights um, or exposure problems in there. Um, I think a lower level of view might have been um, interesting if that were possible um, or maybe moving slightly over to the right to try and um, give a little different perspective. Um, I might have tried cropping out the last ring on the right in the right hand row, um, which I find a little distracting, or maybe a tighter crop um, of some of these to try and create some interesting perspectives. But uh, an interesting installation to photograph and a uh, nice job. Um, I think this was was me too. Um, so for this one, I have to give props to the photographer because I don't think there's any condos in this image, and I think that should get an award just in and of itself, um, given that the way downtown has gone. They're being built. On they're built. Be, yeah, they're being built on the left. So yeah. if we could go back in time and just <laughs> crop that out, I'd really appreciate. Um, but kidding aside, um, I thought there were some really strong things about this image. Um, but then I also thought there were some other things um, I would, would do differently. Um, I like the composition of the buildings in the center. Um, I like uh, I love, of course, the reflections in the water. I thought that was really interesting. It's, I do a lot of night photography myself, so I appreciate how difficult it is to do. It can be very difficult to, to find a good spot. Um, 
when you do architectural photography, there's the concept of plum level square. So one thing that kind of bothered me about this image, or if it were my image I might try to do differently, was I felt that it's not square, and it's, it's not, not quite a diagonal, and it's not quite flat either. It's just at the point where I want it to either be more of a diagonal or be more flat. Um, the horizon is straight, but that, that square is kind of bothering me a little bit. And then I also felt that along the right edge, again, that right edge could be cropped a, a little bit tighter. Um, but overall, I felt that night photography is very difficult to do. I think it's a great shot of downtown Austin. I love the reflections of the water. Um, great image, and kudos for the photographer, and you know, uh, just kill the condos. Polly, Polly Nathan. That's a, that's an interesting, it's a cute name. Uh, okay, so uh, this one, it's kind of like some of the other images we've had this evening. Uh, there's a couple of different things going on that are, uh, my eye is still distracted. I'm still looking to the right-hand side to look at the flower that is off to the right and defocused. Um, and then as we were discussing last night, um, the flower at the top, it, it doesn't, it's just the bottom of it. And it's kind of like, okay, you could maybe remove that, uh, crop it out, um, and then bring your exposure. Then now you've got basically your uh, bumblebee um, nestling in and, and getting pollen out of the flower. Um, it's ever so slightly overexposed. It could have been, you know, you could bring that down just slightly. Um, and the cropping was about it. So um, it, it's interesting, the flower at the very top uh, is very nicely in focus, but the bee is just ever so slightly out of focus. So at the head, as a matter of fact. So. I, I, wanted to say, I wanted to say something about this too, um, very quickly. Um, one thing that I did notice about it and appreciate about it is that there, the flower in the center, the, the, the actually this leaf is a yellowish color and the flowers are sort of a perp, wannabe purplish and I thought that that made a nice complementary color combination. Um, that yellow could be um, punched a little even more but I like the combination, that yellow that moves through the center of the image is, it, to me that adds something to it. Okay, this one's mine. Um, this is a nice shot of the belly dancer in, in mid-flow. Um, I like her head thrown back um, and her hands and arms moving. It's a very nice sense of movement there, a little bit of blur um, in the hands um, as a result of that, um, which I don't mind at all. Um, this was taken at 1 30th. Um, might have been interesting to try something a little slower, a little faster. It would have been nice if the belly dancer was making eye contact with the camera um, but uh, the, the overall movement is is absolutely evident uh, I think it's a bit of a pity that the curtain intersects her face um, I find that a little distracting um, I'm sure she was moving quite a lot so saying the photographer might have tried moving to the right is maybe facile but it would have been nice to try and get her with um, the curtain fully behind her head rather than intersecting um, but uh, yeah yeah interesting image I wanted, to say um, I wanted to say something really quick about this one one of the advantages of still photography over video and other forms of, of visual art is gesture we can really capture gesture and I think this image is an example of that. It's a very strong gestural image. You can tell which way she's moving, but it's still a, 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 you know, a, the decisive moment of her moving, um, and that gesture is really captured well. So if you do portrait photography, it's a good thing to think about the gesture. Is the person, you know, you can tell her, her head's going back, is it coming forward, um, or what are her hands doing? It's really conveying a lot of emotion in the gesture. Okay, now we'll go through <clears throat> the judges' picks uh, from the intermediate uh, division here. Third place, Arlie with Mystified. Would you, like to, would you like to say anything? So, so this is how it came out of the camera. Um, 
I don't, it was kind of a misty night, morning. I think it was like 6 a.m. or something like that. And I just captured this uh, on a walk. And I could, the initial picture cut off the top of the point of the main leaf. So that's the only photoshopping I did to this was to try to fix that. Um, and when I tried to retake it at the time, I, I couldn't get the same silvery effect. So um, it's just kind of a cool shot. No, no filter, she says. Okay, second place, John, with the unique Azure Blue Lake, etc. <laughs> In first place, uh, by Shelton, uh, brighten my day. Okay, now we'll go through the viewer's choice. Uh, there, were, there was a tie for second, so we have two silver. Um, so this one with the uh, Waller Creek show and the, sec the second one that's also a silver is from John, the unique Azure Blue Lake. And people's choice first, our gold medal uh, is Brighten My Day. Yay. Okay, we have seven images that were entered in advanced. And we'll go, go through them. Uh, well, we're, let me just go through them real quick first, and then we'll go back to that. Uh, Sifadan School in Session. Grand Hills Lotus or Graham Hills Lotus, MLK preaches to the sunrise and groundskeepers. Sunset uh, at Monument Valley, Pembroke and Sun, uh, Future Dimensions, Carnival Snake Handler. Okay, That's now the judges. I I think this one was mine. We have some confusion about who did, did what because we critiqued them all. So I'm going to talk about this one, though, because, um, <laughs> of course, I don't do any underwater photography. I mentioned as we, we had our meeting last night, I don't even know how to swim. So, um, of course, I get the underwater photograph to critique. Um, but I do know enough <laughs> to know that it is very difficult to do underwater photography. So, again, it, this is sort of the Olympic-style judging, right? Because I know how difficult it is to, to do. It's very difficult to get a light source. Um, there's a lot of things I really, we all really liked about this image. One of the things was the shafts of light coming through. Um, it's an environmental image. You get to see um, the, the cropping is very strong. Um, it's a very, it's very well illuminated. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit underexposed, but that really adds to the color and sort of punches it up. Um, if this were my image, the one thing I would do, and, and again, I'm a painter, so I'm going to say something that some people may cringe, but I would change the color of the fish to make them separate from the background more. Um, if that is possible, I would go in and sh make them yellow or a different color um, just to make them pop more, but I, I, that may be impossible to do. Um, I did love the shape of the fish. Um, above the, the sort of, we, we were wondering how they all got to s swim in that formation, um, but I... I do think there's not enough, um, I wish there were more separation in the tonality between the, the fish and the coral environment. Um, and I recognize, again, that's very difficult to do with underwater photography because everything is sort of that blue color and it's, it's difficult to, to get anything else. But um, overall, we thought this was a good image and, and I really liked it as well. Yeah, I, I, was, I was the one who was wondering how they herded a school of fish perfectly over this piece of coral. Um, the, uh, and everything that Carol said, I, I agree with. Uh, and we finally, I think we got to a point where we went overboard. So um, it's like if we took the same image uh, 
and ran it through uh, one of the camera raw programs where you could selectively choose colors. I wonder if that would help pop this really, out, you know, pop the colors out, um, darken the blue maybe of the water in the background, those kinds of things. Um, and we're still trying to figure out the errant fish on the right hand side with his mouth open. It's like, yo, dude, I mean, you know, so. Uh, but it's a nice image uh, and I, I do know how to swim and I know that that's very difficult to do, so. Yeah, we, went, we ended up on some fantasy trip wondering whether you could select sky and get to sea, but then we just gave yeah. up and moved on. <laughs> I'll take it. Sure. Okay. Uh, again, we're not sure who was supposed to do what. So um, we, we applaud the photographer who did this because uh, Graham Hill hasn't raced in 100 years, so this must be a film image, uh, we assume. Uh, the color, the, the, the tonality of uh, throughout this whole image is fantastic. Um, tires are black, the numerals on the side the, are, are got the white disc with the black lettering in the inside of it. Um, the sense of speed uh, is brought about by the streaking of the, the racetrack underneath and the angle of view. Um, this might have been a, in a curve, um, but uh, we, we don't know, but it sure does add to it. Uh, and we thought that this was a really well done uh, for the type of technology, especially the type of technology that was available back at that time. So I'm assuming, th we all assume that it's film. So um, congratulations. I, I yeah. I want to say something about it because I, I really love this image and I mentioned before I had the other race car image as well. I, I know how difficult it is to do racing images. There's a couple things I really wanted to point out. Number one is when you do black and white images, it is a story of tones. And with black and white, you can really take the tones in many different directions. And I thought the photographer made some excellent choices. Um, Ansel Adams, in, you know, in the camera, the lens, the, the books of, of yesteryear talked about, you know, black point, white point, everything in between. This has, uh, it's, it's very good tonal range. Um, the, the black points are there, the white points are there, it's wonderful. And then also the, 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 left car, the car on the left edge really works for me because I was reminded of the Monet images of the boats sailing on the, on the water where he, um, his paintings, where he cropped some images deliberately to make the boats look like they were moving. Um, sometimes we try to get a whole object in the frame, but sometimes when you get half an object, it lends a sense of motion. And so that adds the sense that the, the cars are moving from the left to the right edge. And then also kind of the, 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 the car on the right going into the corner a little bit. It gives me a strong diagonal, which again, the perspective is very strong. It adds to that sense of motion. I think there's a lot of things that work really well in this image. I, I thought it was, was really great. I didn't know who Graham Hill was, Apologies for that, but I thought this image worked really well. Yeah, this was uh, this was my one. Uh, so I really like the orange uh, tones in this um, cell phone photo. Um, I think the rust colours evoke both the sunset and uh, autumnal times, assuming it is autumn, and the bicycles and the receding figure walking away out of the frame, um, I think you add a, a, an additional interest and, and dimension to the image. Um, the sky at the top is, is, is very blown out and, and, and very distracting. And I think um, cropping maybe into a square format uh, would help uh, quite a lot and keep the eye on the main focus. I did wonder whether the author had tried to do some masking around the statue because there is a halo around the head and the upper part of the statue in particular. Um, but that may just be the way that the, um, the LG cell phone it was taken on um, was processing. Um, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see it as a, as a square crop um, focusing on the bottom image, but um, nice. This one was me. Um I love the contrast of the red rocks with the blue, blue sky. Um, unlike the, the underwater image, I actually have been out to the southwest and know that the sky really can be that color. 
Um, I love the placement of the rock formation. I think um, it makes really interesting patterns and uh, really gives a lot of depth to the image. Um, one thing we've noticed as a theme tonight is repeated shapes and patterns, um, shapes in patterns. Um, it's something when we're in the field we can look for is look for repeated shapes. I don't know that that's something people always do, but it can really um, add to an image. We saw that with the, with the um, nuclear donuts, and we're seeing that here with the mountain formations, right? It's that repeated shape. It really puts depth into the image. Um, I, th I thought this is a really interesting image, too, because it's a very contemporary exposure. It looked almost like something off of Instagram. And this is an oldies competition, so I thought that was really interesting. It's almost like it's at the, at the edge of being underexposed, but that really makes the colors pop for me. Um, so I thought it was interesting, maybe even suggested that the photographer edited it recently, even though it was an older image. But that, it, it, that shouldn't matter. Um, Regardless, um, it still is a, a wonderful image. I think it works um, on many levels. Another thing, as I mentioned before, if the sky is not working for you, it's working against you, especially with the landscape images. And here the sky is working. You've got that blue, blue sky with that pop of cloud. It's, it's very interesting. Um, very interesting sky. Um, also, the, the landscape in the foreground is um, if this were my image, I might play with the exposure on the foreground just a little bit, but that's really a, a minor nit. Um, I really thought this was an interesting image with a lot of nice repeated shapes. The, uh, I, when I was looking at this image, I, I, everything that's been said is, is wonderful and I agree. Um, I just want the lens that the photographer used to get the sharpness of that, that mountain and, or the, the, yeah, the butte that's probably 15 miles away. Uh, I think it's wonderful. Uh, so that, that was the only thing, I, I love sharp images, but there's something, either this has um, been layered and the layering left the e sharp edges a little bit too much, or it was um, focus stacked way back in the day. Um, so it, it's just, a touch, in my mind, a touch over sharped in those areas, sharpened in those areas. Is that one mine? I think we all want to talk about yeah, this we one. All <laughs> <laughs> I'll start, sure. Um, what a wonderful portrait of a father and son. Um, we just in general like the, the fact that they, the photographer captured such a wonderful moment, um, the, the father being so gentle with this new, newborn, apparently newborn son, um, the lighting is, is just perfect. The fact, the, even the, the fact that this is, looks as though it's really got a lot of gray to it, it works because if you made this a high contrast image or even a normal contrast image, it will take away from the emotion of this whole thing. The, the newborn skin is, is just glows in all of this. The, uh, all of the, the lines in this, the diagonal of the child being held by the father, the hat coming down, the whole bit, it's, it's an extremely well done image. I, I wanna say something about it. Um, light, line, texture, tone, it has it all. It really just does. To me, this image just works on so many levels. The texture of like the, the tweed in the cap and the curl of the hair and the beard and the, 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 the light on the skin tone, um, the gesture of you know, the hands holding the child, um, the, 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 the face on the child, the expression, um, it just, this image just works on many, many levels for me. Um, again, photography is a lot about choices, and a lot of times we don't see the choices that, you know, this, like, as, as Patrick mentioned, the photographer could have gone very dark and very high contrast with this image. The soft contrast just goes with the subject so very well. In this image, the photographer made some very good choices, and I think it really shows. I think this was a very strong image. This was a standout image for me. I really, really liked it. Nice diagonal in the composition as well that just adds even more to it.
I, I'll talk about this one too. Um, I really like this image. Um, I knew where it was taken, and that kind of is cheating because it's, it's, it's part of it is the mystery and intrigue of what, what it is. Um, I like the choice of doing a vertical. Um, I love the repeated, again, it's repeated patterns and repeated shapes, and in this image, it has that line. Um, it has strong lines in it, which is, is really interesting. Um, in, in the art world, we talk about, if you paint, they talk about quality of line. Um, for me, this image has some really intriguing lines in it, and so that, that adds a, a depth to it. Um, we talked about it in, in the judging session um, when, you know, when we met ourselves, and one of the things I mentioned is that if this were my image, I would play with it a little bit. I would maybe take it to cyanotype, or I would um, play around, make it look more like a line drawing, even accentuate that quality of line about it. Um, I thought it was carefully seen. I love how the figures in it add a sense of scale. I love the repeated shapes and lines in the image. And again, I, we come back to that several times. Repeated shapes make for good images and add depth. I like the choice of vertical. Um, one thing I also mentioned, if, if this were my image, I might pop the perspective a little bit from the top. Um, just keystone it a little to bring the front, the, the top forward just a tad to kind of make it even more in your face um, and make it complete vertical, um, just a touch. But again, that's really a nit. I thought this was a really intriguing image, has a sense of mystery and strong quality of line about it. Carnival snake handler. Interesting image. Um, definite overtones of a Victorian era freak show here. Um, the uh, the f the face and the torso of the subject are nicely in focus. Although there's a bit of softness uh, around the feet, um, and um, that, d that distracts me a little bit. The the EXIF data shows me this was shot at half a second, um, and if that's so, I, I wonder why it was shot so slow. Um, and uh, I would have thought there was probably an opportunity to make it a bit sharper. Um, it would have been nice if there was a subject was looking at the camera. I suspect she may have been looking at a whole bunch of people that were standing around her at the time. Um, and maybe a little more separation between the subject and, and the background. Maybe closing down um, a bit would, uh, would help with that. Um, I'm also a little bit distracted by the guy who's standing behind her right elbow. Uh, that once I saw him, I couldn't not see him. But uh, I like the idea, and um, interesting image. <clears throat> All right, again, since we don't have very many pictures, there will be uh, two awards given by the judges. Second place by Lewis is the sunset at Mountain Valley. And first place by Gary, the Pembroke and the Sun. Yeah. You want to say something? <clears throat> I'll stand up and use my conference call voice. Um, Brooke was a, uh, a co-worker when this was taken back in 2015, I think, a while back. Um, and quite a character. Uh, uh, goofy guy, great to work with, a great sense of humor, uh, lots of fun, and so he and his wife then became pregnant, and at the time I was looking at trying to develop my skills with uh, family and newborn photography, and so I offered to, to do some pictures with him, and he was a great subject. Uh, the baby was great. He was, he was very cooperative. Um, we had a very good time that morning, and uh, so yeah, this was uh, done with a very casual setup in their house with uh, I think a one umbrella and a, a, um, I think we had a big window there as well, if I remember correctly. And honestly, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, so <laughs> I got kind of lucky, but uh, uh, it, it, it helps when you have good people to work with. So. Okay, now we'll go through the viewer's choice. So bronze to Dennis. Uh, with his school of fish. Do you want to so, hand it? Yeah, this was taken in uh, 2008, and you're definitely right. It's very difficult to get any color 
and and I came across this picture and it was just flat and ugly and and I thought okay I'm going to try reprocessing it knowing what I know now about doing it and that's about the the best I could pull out of it but I, I worked hard on that for a while just to see what I could do and thought I'd, I'd just see what other people thought about it then. Okay. Silver goes to Gary. And gold goes to Lewis. All right, that is the end of our presentation. Is there any other business that we need to talk about? Uh, before we adjourn the meeting, go ahead. Um, I've been approached, I'm doing an interview with uh, Canvas Rebel magazine. They're uh, um, an online and I think in print magazine. Um, and part of the interview, they will ask me if I know any other photographers that want to be featured in Canvas Rebel. Um, so I usually try to put two or three names in the hat. So if anybody is interested, um, they, will, they will ask me for either a way to contact you, like your website or your email or your Instagram feed even could work, or if you have a Facebook page. Um, if you're interested, just see me and um, I will put your name in the hat um, when I do the interview. Thank you, thank you to the judges. Great job, good effort went into it. I'm even gonna stick it in my throat in a minute, Carol. <laughs> but thank you again. And Ty, nice job. I like the PowerPoint only version of this. Thank you. Ed, thank you for putting together the video. It's appreciated. Uh, Clay? You look like you want to say something. I just want to say uh, thanks to everybody who came out tonight. We're apologizing to the Zoom group. Apologize to the Zoom group because uh, with technical problems, just couldn't get them connected. So just to remind everybody that in-person meetings really give you a chance to socialize. The Zoom meetings are something we're going to keep trying. But uh, we've had technical difficulties tonight. And so you'll need to watch the recording if you missed anything. And a big thanks to Stephen for bringing his friends to Texas. Oh yes, Stephen. Yes. Do you want to say? Do you want to say something about him? If Carol can go back there and critique my landscapes for me. <laughs> are they all within the last? No. Yeah, most of them are in the last year or two, and um, I guess I'll be next. Thursday, I'll be getting off a plane in Calgary where it's going to be a nice, comfortable negative 10 degrees to do a landscape um, workshop up in Banff and Lake Louise and go walk out on the ice and get ice. That same mountain with the water, the blue water, well, I'll be on that same lake, but it'll be frozen. So... Yeah, it's going to be a little cold for this Texas boy. I got electric everything now. I think I even bought an electric vest. <laughs> yeah, our next, uh, our, our speaker on uh, the 18th of this month is Lisa House. She is a commercial wedding photographer she is working out of um, uh, Lockhart, but she, when I looked at her website, it's, uh, she bills herself as a luxury wedding photographer. Uh, that's the primary thing that she bills herself out as. But if you, get a chance to, um, if you get a chance to go to her website, which I think we're gonna put on her uh, in the bio uh, out on our website, go take a look at her commercial side because that's very, very creative. She's got some nice uh, portraits in there, but she's also got some commercial stuff and, and she just has fun with her images. And she's very good at what she does. She's been doing it for quite a number of years. Um, so uh, she'll be here. I, she'll be giving us a, a class on portrait uh, photography and uh, she'll bring a little setup, lights kind of thing. So bring your cameras on Thursday uh, maybe we'll get a chance to shoot. Maybe you get a chance to be a model. Uh, or maybe we can get a model 
you know, we'll see what we can, what we can do. But um, yeah, it should be a very, very interesting uh, time with her. She teaches or has taught in the past. Pre-COVID, she would normally teach this class uh, for people, for small groups. And so it'll be nice to have her. I think it's the first time she's taught this class in years. So uh, it allows her to get back into it and we get to be the guinea pigs. So yay. Um, and then we're working on the February one. We're, we're still nailing down. I've got two or three people that we need to get readjusted on dates. That's, that's about it. They've, they've agreed to do it. It's just we, I think we had to swap some dates out. So yeah, but that's where we're at. I just want to take a moment to welcome uh, Shirley Friesen, who's uh, Arlie's friend. She joined, so she's a new member. And uh, Roger Edwards, who's not here, is a new, a new person that joined. And of course, we mentioned that Frank is here. So if you have a chance to, before leaving tonight, to say something to them, that would be really nice. Welcome them to the club. And then final shout out is that, of course, the uh, show at the Pflugerville Library that Waylon talked about. There'll be instructions for those sent out, but you should be working on them. You get to, you know, you can even sell your images if that's a motivation for you. If otherwise, it's a public display, and we'd love to have you uh, display your images. One other thing I was just thinking about listening to this is <laughs> Carol's going to keep reminding me. I'm going to get a little lapel mic. I'm going to get a little lavalier. But, uh, some of us has kicked around the idea of birds of a feather meetups. They'd probably be just a Zoom meeting. People that are interested could join. We could do things like some of the Lightroom uh, facilities that people don't go into very often. For example, the library and all of the metadata that you can sort on there to find images. Uh, we've also talked about asking uh, advanced or anybody that you want to go to uh, to be a mentor to help you figure out some part of the process that you would like help with. Uh, if there's nothing else, I think we can say thank you, Ty. You put a nice program together. Have a great one, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>